The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. We begin at the end of chapter 13. Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. I tell you the truth, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. What a precious gift at a horrible moment. Jesus has just told Peter the worst thing he could, that he will fail 
Jesus terribly that night. The disciples had their feet washed. They heard the command to love. They didn't know what was ahead that night or tomorrow, that incomprehensible Friday. But something was wrong. Peter's exuberant, I will lay down my life for you, is crushed by Jesus' prediction of his betrayal. Imagine the stricken, horrified look on Peter's face. But Jesus immediately comforts him. Maybe reaches out and touches his hand. He looks at Peter and the others, equally shocked and afraid, and says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In their worst hour so far, Jesus tells all of these faithful ones that all of them, including Peter, will always have a home with God. They all belong. They are beloved. So do not let your hearts be troubled, he says to them. Believe in God. Believe also in me. This promised home is a source of great hope for us too. In death, we cling to the promise that Christ will take us into God's house, into rooms prepared. But here Jesus is also talking about the here and now, a present reality that is transformed by that future promise. The disciples can't think about life after death on this night. But they can hear that they still belong to God now. That they have a home with God. Home is the place that anchors our existence. It's the place where we're always welcome. Where we belong. Where we're strengthened and sheltered and fed. A place where we can sit on the porch with loved ones and have fellowship. Jesus is that home for these disciples. But now, in these next chapters, beginning here, he begins to tell them that that is their certain and present reality, even with him leaving. And this home is ours, too. This is our way, truth, and life, that we are never alone that we always belong in the heart of God, that we have home in God. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he says to us. Believe in God. Believe also in me. It's a wonderful promise, but how can we know it's true? Philip's questions are ours. Well, if you've seen me, Jesus answers, you've seen the Father. If you know me, you know what you need to know about God. That's how you know this is true, he says. God has made a home in your flesh, and that's me. And with these words, And the words about the Holy Spirit that immediately follow this reading, Jesus unfolds the mystery of the Trinity. The relationship, the oneness he has with the one whom he calls Father. The spirit that comes from the both of them. And this is mystery beyond telling. But Jesus is the face of God for us. The love that Jesus lives dies in, rises with, is God's love. The words Jesus says are God's words. So we can trust Jesus when he says we have a home with God. Jesus is the face of the Trinity for us and shows us that God is love for us. Trust me, Jesus says. Trust me. You belong. You have a home. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. But what if we mess up? When we know ourselves, 
We know we fail. We know we don't always love. We know we've done many things that hurt others, that hurt God. What if we fail so badly, we're no longer welcome now in God's dwelling? Well, do we think we're going to fail worse than Peter? Peter, the trusted lieutenant who cursed and swore three times he didn't even know his Lord? Will we run away like those other cowards that night? Betray like Judas? Maybe. But knowing fully what Peter was about to do and what the others would do, Jesus looked him in the eye and said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am going to prepare a place for you in my Father's house. I don't know. Maybe you can imagine such a grievous sin that you've done or will do that will exclude you. But the only answer you have is the one that will end your fear forever. The face of Jesus looking concernedly at you saying, don't be afraid. You will always be loved. Saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Because we have this home in God now, a place where our hearts are at peace, where we are filled and surrounded by God's love, because we have a promise of a home with God after we die, we're safe. We're safe in God now, safe in the promise to come, so we can be bold. We can be bold in our following, like Peter. Three times denying his Lord, Christ's risen love finds him. And Peter goes out and boldly preaches, stands up before authorities and refuses to stop preaching and teaching. Because we're safe in God, we can be bold like Stephen. His ministry was to care for the widows and the poor who were being neglected. We can do that. He also preached, that's what got him killed. He boldly preached Jesus and the resurrection because he knew he was always at home. And when he died, like his beloved Jesus, he commended his spirit home to God. And he asked forgiveness for his killers. Because we're always safe at home in God, we can be bold like Stephen and serve others, help those in need as he did. For example, we can help those who not only might struggle to find a home with God, but literally do not have a home, physically have no roof, no porch to sit on, no place to sleep. And we can help those who not only have lost their homes, but their lands, driven from where they live by climate change and unjust governments, wandering millions of them, hoping, wondering if anyone will welcome them in. Because we are safe in our spiritual home in God, we are free to boldly proclaim God's love in Christ, to join with others, to help all of those who have no home literally and physically find a home. We are free to be Christ. Paul once said that we are, each of us, all of us, temples of God. That we bear God in our bodies into the world. But Peter in his letter today imagines a more communal thing. He says that we are in our community joined together and in that joining, it's like we're mortared stones. We are linked together as living stones, he says, and we become the house of the living God, the living house of the living God. And Peter says, in that living house of God, with those living stones that are us, we are able to proclaim God's love, 
Declare the mighty deeds of the one who called us out of darkness into light. We become, like God, a home that opens up to the world and welcomes people in who do not know their home so that they too can meet God inside, so that they too can be fed and surrounded by God's love, so that they too can know that they always have a home in God now and in the life to come. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Christ says. And now the one who died and now is risen says, now do you believe in God? Now do you believe in me? You are home. And you are God's home, God's welcoming embrace to the world. Be that, he says, so that all may know their home at last. In Jesus' name, amen.